Hi, welcome to my studio. I'd like to introduce Jeremy, one of our Five Pencil Method team. Hey Daryl, thank you very much. It's good to be here with you. We'd like to let you know how excited we are about the feedback that we've gotten. We sent a survey out last week to find out what you think you would really like to know about drawing portraits. Right, right. We sent out a survey and we've so far we've had over 300 people reply to it with um, just telling us a little bit about how drawing and, and portrait drawing in particular really affects them. So Daryl's going to get to sharing a few tips on how to draw personality into your portraits in just a minute. But first, we wanted to share what you had to say, share the results of the survey we sent out. And, uh, you know, as we were going through the survey results, we noticed a few common themes. And uh, the first theme was all about satisfaction in drawing, whether that's the satisfaction you get from giving your portraits away as a present or just seeing a life come, seeing a face come to life on your paper. So here's a quote that we got. I want to read it to you. And uh, this, this commenter said, As things start to come together, the feeling is fantastic. Even though you have lots to do, you can see where you're going and that you're getting there. And that sense of satisfaction warms you inside and puts a smile in your heart. And uh, Daryl, is that a feeling that you can relate to? Is that something you've experienced as an artist? Oh, definitely. And especially if you understand uh, the procedure and you have a confidence of where you're going and what you're trying to achieve as you see yourself getting those steps out of the way and it starts progressing it really makes a lot of difference instead of just wandering around not really knowing what to expect or where you're going very good very good and i've got a couple i've got a few more here um another person said i enjoy seeing the person's response when they see the finished portrait i also like the compensation and another one said, what I love is the re reactions people have when I give them the portrait of their loved one. The happiness it brings is amazing. And uh, another person said, I feel a sense of accomplishment once I've finished a portrait, and I'm so glad I, c I stumbled across Daryl's tutorials. I would never have attempted to draw people otherwise. But I'd have to say the one thing I love most about drawing portrait is the look and sometimes tears on people's faces when they see it for the first time. That to me is the greatest compliment I could ever get as an artist. Now, what's, uh, listening to that, Daryl, what's your favorite part of the portrait process? Oh, I, I love the process because I, I have done it enough that I know uh, what I'm trying to achieve, like I said before. But there's so many aspects of drawing portraits that just bring such reward and one of those, again, is having that uh, uh, not only your satisfaction of what you've accomplished, but when you, uh, you know, give it as a gift or maybe in a, consign uh, it's a, uh, a commission, uh, the reaction from the person that it really appreciates what you've just accomplished is just a wonderful, wonderful feeling. And it's exciting to hear that others are feeling that, too, because I've always enjoyed that aspect of it. Uh, I've seen everything from tears to uh, just stunned uh, uh, because here is their loved one on a, uh, uh, in a piece of art. So I'm glad you're experiencing that too. Yeah, it's really incredible. And actually the Five Pencil Method community is a great place to see that. I love seeing that all the time. I, um, recently I saw someone who posted a picture of, um, I guess it was her granddaughters receiving a portrait that she had drawn for them. And that was just so cool to see their face and see how excited they were. So. Yeah. And you have that time to spend that, that time with that person. Now, often uh, it's somebody you don't always see, or maybe it's somebody you enjoy being around. Maybe it's somebody that's passed on. And uh, it gives you an opportunity to reconnect or to be able to just spend that time. It's amazing what it will do when you just look at every nuance and remember their character and personality. Right, right. Well, that brings me to the next theme that people talked about so often, and that's uh, they really enjoy the creative process, just the, just the act of, of drawing and getting things done. And uh, here's a couple of quotes that we picked up from that. One person said, I love that it is totally absorbing, and at the same time relaxing. You know, no worries when I'm drawing, Plus, I love that I can use such simple tools to create something that looks so real. And another person said, it's such an escape from everything. I get absorbed in it. There's that word again, absorbed. 
I find it relaxing. And another mm-hmm. part of it is that I, it's so completely different from work or taking care of my home, everyday stuff like that. So do, Daryl, do you ever find yourself absorbed in your work and your art? Oh, I, I lose track of time so easily. And I, and I just really uh, uh, enjoy the fact that others are experiencing that too. Sometimes I realize that uh, time can go by and maybe you didn't allot that much time for your art. But it's so uh, interesting how you can just completely lose track of time. And something just keeps compelling you to go on and on because you're excited about what you're seeing develop on your, on your drawing. And uh, it's kind of like uh, uh, I like to process. I get absorbed in a process. I want to accomplish one more thing, one more thing, one more thing because I see those little successes along the way. And also, you can all you can actually kind of lose yourself and either be thinking about the experience, the person, or even something completely different. It's uh, a time to kind of meditate and uh, you know just think about other things. You can go into an automatic mode if you have the procedures down to where it is indeed just instinctual. Right, right. And this this next comment actually is kind of an aspect I hadn't thought so much about, but they said. I love drawing. It's a great stress release for me. And another person said, I've come to realize that drawing is the most relaxing thing I've ever done. And another one said, once I start the drawing, it's pure relaxation and peace of mind. Yeah, I've experienced that so often. Of course, it goes the other way, too. It's, I think it's important uh, to get out and get some exercise. You can lose track of how much time you've been sitting. But uh, it is such a relaxing satisfaction. Uh, on your end, creating it, uh, it, that's enjoyable, and and it's kind of like the person receiving the uh, piece of art, too. Uh, they uh, just can't believe you spent that kind of time connecting with this person. And uh, it's, it's something that you probably wouldn't understand until you really get into it and have a chance to uh, accomplish it. It's a fascinating experience. Very good. And this, this last comment for this section um, was probably one of my favorites. Um, kind of touched on something that I think a lot of people have to deal with. But uh, they said, getting lost in the process of creation. You have no worries, no problems, no pain. They said, I have heart and lung problems, but I found that when I study and draw, all worries disappear. I get completely into the drawing. It's a joy to see the progress I've made. There's tons more to learn, but I'm so grateful you're here to teach. So is that is that a... An instance that you've noticed a lot, people who actually, they kind of forget their physical pain once they start to draw. Yeah, I there's many people who are physically handicapped, uh, you know, unable to get out. It gives them something to do. And yet, on the other end, uh, many people who are out there working and uh, have so much to do find themselves making time to draw because it's such a wonderful experience. And uh, so it is relaxing. So uh, just make sure you know you you uh, have a chance to walk around a little bit, and uh, sometimes that's hard, and I lose track of it. I keep telling myself I'm going to go get something to eat or do something else, and all of a sudden two hours went by. So it's easy to lose track of time. Right, right. Okay, one more one more common trend that we want to we want to share some quotes from. So another person said. Actually, the other theme is uh, capturing personality. Mm-hmm. People just love that they can take a pencil, take a blank piece of paper, and draw somebody and know that it's going to look like that person. That they can capture their personality, maybe really see who they are, just with nothing but a pencil and paper. So, And isn't that fascinating yeah. that with a pencil on a blank piece of paper, you can create something that has depth and, and personality and communicates so much from those two simple tools. Exactly, exactly. Well, here's one person that felt that way. They said, I find that the process of drawing a portrait brings me very close to the subject in an extremely personal way. And it almost always results in the formation of an emotional bond. Have you have you ever felt that way about subjects you're drawing? I certainly have. And uh, I, I felt at times that I almost knew the person better by the time I got finished drawing the portrait than the one that had asked me to do it in the first place. Of course, that is, that's rare, but still, I've studied every little nuance of their face and tried to absorb their character and understand who they were so I could try and communicate that. And there's a lot of little tricks that I teach 
you know, that will help you do the same thing. Being able to make sure that you're not just doing a mannequin face, but you're actually capturing that person, the uniqueness of their character and personality. Exactly. Yeah, and actually, being being a part of your art studio, I've had I've had the uh, chance to kind of experience that myself. You know, with each new subject you draw, whether it's Mr. Mulligan or Goldilocks or whatever subject, or the cat, are, or the cat. Yeah, I mean, yeah. These are, they're just pictures that we find or pictures yeah. that we take. And yet, by the end of the drawing process, they have a name, and they we've all kind of created this character based sure. on just this person. Sure. But on the other hand, uh, you know, it can be a simple inanimate object, and you can still find the personality within that. What is it communicating? It's amazing what you'll start seeing once you realize what you can do and accomplish in expressing it and uh, bringing out those different aspects that are so interesting. Very good. Very good. I got a couple more, a couple more comments to share, and we'll move on. But another, another commenter said, sculpting with pencil the features. So this is something that they really enjoy. Sculpting with pencil the features so that you can see three-dimensional form on a two-dimensional surface. Yeah. And another person said, I love it's, it. It, it, is, it is an illusion, but it's yeah, amazing exactly. how believable it can become. Well, another person said, I love it when a face suddenly appears from out of the paper. All of a sudden, a face is just staring back at you. Now, is this, do you still get excited when you see this? phenomenon take place? Oh, yes. I, I, I strive to achieve that, uh, especially when you have the opportunity of having your subject look at you. Of course, there's a lot of other effective ways of portraying somebody, but when you can make that eye connection, uh, it's, it's something that can be missed easily, but if you look at a, a few certain rules to follow, you'll be able to really have an eye contact that is so important Every animal knows, uh, you know, where to look on a human's face. They're going to look at your eyes to find out what you're thinking and what you're doing. And, uh, and we do the same thing. There's so much emotion and so much communicated through uh, eyes. And uh, I just love that opportunity to just really zero in on uh, that connection. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, this, um, the idea of, of showing personality was such a, such a strong point, and there were so many comments uh, based on it. We wanted to uh, we wanted to kind of do a quick a quick lesson and see if you could kind of give us some insight. Um, and you know, what are some specific places that uh, you want to look for in a face when you're drawing and you're trying to convey personality in a portrait? Can you kind of break down and, and show us what it is people should be looking for? Yeah, there's there's so many things that are so easily missed. And there's many things, more than I can probably show you right here. But let's go ahead and take a look at a few things that I printed out here. And it'll give us an idea about uh, how easily you can change the expression, the mood, or even, again, the personality and character of your subject. Uh, if you're not careful. This is why I like to really pay attention to uh, angles and curves. Look at how uh, even the eyebrow, we, we probably know that from drawing cartoons or looking at cartoons. Look at the difference between the eyebrow lifted up and it being down low right next to the fold in the eyelid and where the white is showing in the eye. If it's above, then it says one thing. If it's below and there's a space between the iris and the eyelid on uh, in another situation, it says something completely different. And often it's interesting that uh, the, the mouth doesn't always uh, communicate what we think it should be like. I mean, we'll, we'll go ahead and construct it like we think it would communicate the mood, maybe even a smile or a laugh, and we find out that it actually turns down. Well, sometimes we'll just make a smiley face kind of a a situation on there and it actually changes it quite a bit. But uh, look at all of the different uh, turns and curves that we have. Smile lines start showing up, you know, the the muscles all start uh, creating your the lift to the cheek and some of these things are wonderful to be able to uh, communicate and understand how do I get uh, a gradation that uh, suggests a contour in here. And would I want to put this, just because I think it should be there, on something like this? No. And so these things can drastically change what you're communicating about a person. Uh, here's another uh, uh, one with a uh, young woman here that had a pretty animated face. And we can see again how drastically uh, things can change. She still has two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. 
and yet uh, just making the turn a little different is uh, is uh, going to change it drastically. And when you come up, yes, we could say this is a smile, but this isn't really like this. So we want to notice the differences. And then suddenly this turns down a little bit. Even this turns down a little bit. And there's little, there's little things like that that help pull off the expression and the mood that we want to be able to capture. There's many other things. I share as many of them as I possibly can, you know, to bring depth and personality, making sure that you're not missing those key elements that, again, capture the character of that individual and keep you from just drawing a generic uh, face. And uh, then somebody says, well, uh, it's a nice drawing, but you didn't really capture that person as I know them. So there's uh, a lot of things that I can share with you, and I am glad and happy to see uh, so many of you just gradually making sure that's part of your checklist and you notice them when you see them. So uh, anyway, just a few things there thought I'd share with you. So that was a great demonstration, but another thing that we kind of picked up on it going through these survey results was there were a lot of people who said, well, I was born without natural talent. They said, I just don't have the ability. It, it's not possible. So to watch you demonstrate that, it seems like, okay, yeah, that's easy. I could do that. But a lot of people feel that they don't have the natural talent. What would you, what would you tell them? Well, I, I realize that there's a difference between somebody that just really has a natural ability uh, has that perception that helps them be able to really create a dynamic piece of art. But I would like to suggest that you can do the same thing, especially when you learn the principles, you learn the fundamentals, which I take you through step by step. It's so easy. Of course, it takes a lot of work. Well, what I'm saying is you break it down and don't get overwhelmed with so many things to remember and, uh, and learn how to do all at once. It just goes step by step, one element, attached to another, and then something else is uh, incorporated into that. You learn how they all fit together. And when you see yourself accomplishing these things, it starts helping you gain the, uh, the uh, satisfaction. You just accomplished that. And then when you start putting things together and you learn what to look for and you learn you can do contours and bring depth into a drawing, you start realizing, well, maybe I do have the ability to do this. And... Uh, it just keeps going. We have uh, so many of you that have become, I would consider, world-class artists and started from just drawing a line, a line you didn't even think you could draw. I hear that all the time. I don't think I can even draw a line. I can't draw stick figures, and I don't care. It doesn't make any difference. You just have to learn what to do. And the same thing is learning uh, you know, some of those key elements and uh, you know, finding the character in somebody. Uh, you, know, you just learn what to look for. And uh, if you spend the time, you're going to get there. At least improve on your ability and uh, what your, uh, uh, you know, your skill level is. Uh, and there's so many different levels that are successful. You don't have to be a world-class artist. You can make what you do, a very simple drawing, so effective by just learning some of these elements. Hmm, that's great. That's, uh, that's encouraging, I'm sure, to anybody struggling with that issue. Yeah, I've seen it about, happen over and over and over again. Well, and what about, what about that person who may or may not feel that they have the ability to do it, but they're just, they're just crippled by fear? They, um, mm -hmm. they just can't bring themselves to, to take that first step and make that first line. And how would you suggest them kind of overcoming that fear and building up confidence? Learning what some of those exercises are. Some people are so intimidated by somebody making a comment as to whether they thought they were artistic or had any skill or not. And some end up by never trying again because they don't want to go through the embarrassment of doing something they think is very uh, unsophisticated, uh, very simple, maybe even uh, what some might consider a bad drawing. But uh, it is your opportunity to uh, open up this, this ability to create something and again, when you learn those steps, you can start adding and adding and adding and then end up with something that is far beyond what you ever thought you could do. Uh, I'm always encouraged. I see improvement in everybody if they're willing to go ahead and try. It's not going to happen by itself. It's not magic. You have to go ahead and spend the time. But if you take those steps again simply and don't overwhelm yourself, 
you'll be able to continually have success rates and successful, you know, uh, you know, elements of drawing. And you start putting those things together, just like a piece of, uh, you know, a puzzle, uh, putting the pieces in. You finally see the full picture, and uh, and and those spaces that are left become less and less and less the more pieces you put in. So. I just encourage you to really try, and no one's going to laugh at you from my end because we're just excited you're actually taking a step. It's so exciting. That's what you need to do is to get past that fear factor. It's a safe place uh, in the community, for example, to fail, uh, and all of us have. And because you always learn something, when you think you've made a mistake, you have just learned something, and uh, you'll be able to utilize that later. That is so true. And it's, it always excites me when I'm on the community and I see someone just signing up and they'll be asking questions like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm afraid to show my art. And uh, people come in and encourage them. And you, you see some hesitance for quite a while, but once they put that first art piece up and they get the positive feedback, there's just this excitement and they get bitten by the bug, if you yeah. will. And I think, I think an awful lot of the people, and I've seen some just in the last few days, they come on there and maybe they didn't come in through the normal procedure and they just wanted to be part of the community. And now they say, well, I can't really draw. How do I do? How do I draw? Almost a generic question like that. And what I want you to do is go through again some of those uh, beginning lessons and look at some of the videos that show you some of those uh, smaller steps and uh, understand how important each element is to creating something that's really going to again be holding someone's interest and be dynamic and allow you to communicate something so very good very good well one last question we had and uh, something we saw come up quite a bit in the results people asked you know how how do I capture the nuance in skin texture? You know, not, not just a flat, smooth skinned baby, but I want to draw things like freckles, wrinkles, scars, blemishes, dimples, you know, just things that you see in real life. Um, but before you answer that, I'm going to stop you because we're out of time for this video. But there will be another video. And uh, I don't know if you want to, if you have any last words you'd like to share. Well, I, I want to thank you for watching and I uh, want to encourage you to keep sending in your comments uh, on what you've learned. It always teaches us a lot and how we can better communicate to you. And uh, uh, we'll see you in the next video. Yeah, so thank you so much for being a part of this short presentation. And uh, like Daryl said, we want to encourage you to leave comments, whether it's a question about this specific video or just drawing in general, or even if you, uh, you just want some clarification about something you saw. Whatever it may be, you can leave it in the comments box just below this video. And uh, again, thank you so much for being a part of this, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Yeah, really appreciate you watching, and uh, I hope to see you in the next video. Let us know if it helped.